How difficult is it to park one of those ambulance beasts? <laughs> it can be quite tricky. Um, as you see, we have supermarkets and planes already lined out. Uh, the paramedic was reluctant to park in a disabled bay, um, as she and that was the only position to park in safely. Um, obviously, parked okay. up as close to those uh, um, uh, markers as she could and got out of the way as much as she could. Um, people were able to pass her. I don't see the issue, really. OK, okay. we're uh, going to no, come back to you tell again. Tell you what we're going to do. Francesca. We're going to maybe phone back Francesco, re-establish that link. Sounds a wee bit dodgy so, Ian, uh, on that. You were taking, collecting your daughter from school, so you saw this unfolding. So the, I did, the yeah. ambulance is there and you saw the parking warden. Uh, did you talk to him? Um, well... I could see him taking the photos to get the evidence yeah. of the uh, ambulance and I was just approaching and I was just so amazed at what I was seeing and so incensed that I just thought I should start filming it because it was just, to me, totally morally wrong. And the other people, it sounded like on your film, I couldn't see them all the time, were mm. also kind of remonstrating with this, this traffic warden and saying, come on. Yes, there were other people who were there and, and there were passers-by as well who, who, who were talking and trying to explain the, the stupidity of the situation. Um, in your opinion, how long, did the, you know, how long was the ambulance there? She just parked, went in, came out. How many minutes? It was already there when I, when I um, arrived, so I couldn't say how long it had been there, mm. but from what I gather, they hadn't been there long mm. and they were literally just popping in for some water and food after a very long eight-hour shift. Which sounds perfectly reasonable, Will. Hurley. Uh, absolutely. It? Yeah. There's so many different scenarios that happen when people park on private land and I think anybody can say that often common sense needs to prevail and what we have to do is look at what happened in this scenario and see whether or not it was right or wrong. And, and what I must make clear is that a parking charge was never issued to that vehicle. The company that issued the charges on that particular site have a process whereby when there is a uh, incident that a parking warden thinks justifies a parking charge, they take the evidence and send it back to the head office who then make a decision as to whether or not they will issue one. That process but happened. The very, but, but, Will, the very fact that... The, the, because once they start taking photographs, you know that process has, has started, OK? So just let, hear me out. Yes. OK, but the very fact that he was even thinking about issuing this uh, paramedic with a parking ticket, the fact he was taking the photographs, walking around the vehicle like they do, you know, it's a... It's a paramedic who he didn't know at that point whether they were on call or not. W without any doubt, what he should have done is deal with the situation entirely differently. No, what you should do is lay down the law and change the rules for this. So you're not going to. So you're going to cover your backside today by saying, well, every case has to be considered on its merits and we'll look at this and whatever. Why don't you just change the law for emergency services? The difficulty is if you make it so that emergency services have the carte blanche to park anywhere, they would, it would be abused the other way, potentially. What we I, have I to really do... Couldn't, can, you, can you honestly sit and say you believe that a paramedic or a police officer or a fire, somebody driving a fire vehicle would go... Oh, Oh, you know, I know I'm off duty now, but what I'll do, I'll stop at the supermarket on the way home, do my weekly shop and collect my dry cleaning and leave the fire engine or the police car. Come yeah. on. We've seen, unfortunately, that, that it does happen from time to time, and, and that's why we have to have rules, reasonable rules, that are interpreted reasonably okay. and that are approached reasonably. So the... the uh, well, we have to bring you... Uh, sorry, Ian, we're going to bring you because you, you, you were there. But basically, the, the parking warden there, we can't even give him the excuse that he was on commission because he wasn't on commission for doing that. So was he just stupid? No. Well, I, I, I think it's a, a case of perhaps um, he hadn't been trained properly, possibly his personality. He, he didn't have a clear view of what was right or wrong and morally what he should or shouldn't do. And in, in a way, he could have actually made himself a hero by actually just saying, actually, I'm not going to do it. And it would have been a totally different video and everyone would have been happy. There wouldn't have been many people going in and out of that supermarket in Northwich who would have said, Bloom an ambulance out there, get that move, give it a ticket, tow it away. Do you think there would have been? No, none at all. And from some of the posts I've seen from the, the Twitter feed and, and Facebook, 90% um, of the people are in support of the paramedics. Just to explain to us, on a shift, how many hours shift would that be? How many breaks do you get? How difficult is it for you to stop and go to the loo or get something to eat? Um, very difficult. Generally, they are 12-hour shifts, but often crews are working longer now. They're finishing later, often 13, even 14-hour shifts. Uh, obviously, in the heat we've had in recent days, obviously keeping hydrated and um, keeping some food 
is paramount because obviously they can't perform at their best and look after the public if they're dehydrated themselves. So, um, yeah, it's, it's really important. They only get half an hour guaranteed break in those 12 hours, and that doesn't allocate time in order to go and get your food. You have the unfortunate task of being here representing, you know, some of the most hated professionals in the, in the world, along with estate agents and journalists and, <laughs> and, and things like that. So, basically, you're in a very embarrassing position here, and you're trying to remain sort of quite neutral, carbon neutral, on all of this without saying anything. You know what's wrong, we know what's wrong. If we ran a phone poll here today, you would be wiped off the planet, right? It would be 101% against you. Why don't you just change the rules and say, guys, lay off them, leave them alone. But they're just not be exempt. What we, what we absolutely will do is look at whether or not we can produce anything that provides some clarity for people. Thankfully, locally, people have been fantastic and they've been offering emergency services, um, water and free food if they uh, are on duty and come in. So locally and I, and I live locally to, to that area so it's been a fantastic response but what we will do is we will take away and look and learn from the experiences of this what we have to do is make sure that there is the reasonable rules that are enforced reasonably